Hi everybody, in this video we're going to review the Shimano Pro Stealth Off-Road Saddle. Woo, that's a mouthful there. Hey, what are you doing? overview of the video and we're going to talk about the specs of the saddle and compare it to the original stealth saddle and then we're going to talk about how it handled on the gravel how it worked on the mountain bike and then how it worked on the road and then we'll talk about the final conclusion if you should actually buy the saddle uh, and replace your original pro stealth road saddle Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what Shimano has done different with this saddle compared to the previous saddle. So as you can see here, clearly the first thing you notice is this is closed off. So the opening is closed off here. Also, it has quite a bit more padding as well. So uh, where the original saddle you can see here, it doesn't have near as much padding as the new one. So you can see how it mashes down. You have plenty of padding there and I'm having to push pretty hard to, to get that down. The, the cover of this saddle is very grippy uh, compared to the other. The other saddle you'll move around on a lot if it's uh, if you have a lot of sweat or it's wet out, you move around a lot. This saddle, you know, even when it's summertime and it's raining or, or super hot and you're sweating all over this thing, you stick to the saddle and it doesn't move around. Now also with this saddle, as you can see here, they've actually uh, made the edges have a little bit of a, a grippy texture to them. Uh, so if you're leaning this against uh, you know, a tree or, or whatever you're leaning against, uh, you won't have any issues there. And uh, as you can see here on this saddle, I've already had a couple sections here that were actually you know, where, where they rubbed off. Now really this is not designed for you to lean it on stuff. It's actually designed for you know, when you hit the inside of your leg uh, or if you're trying to move back behind your saddle, uh, it won't hurt as much. So that's the design of that. Another difference you can see here is uh, this rear kind of fin area, okay, you can kind of see it there on the, on the road saddle, uh, has been removed on this saddle. So when I first got the saddle, I thought it was shorter than the road saddle. And after comparing it, I figured out it was just this back piece here that they basically trimmed down. So if you run the saddles together, <clears throat> basically at the top, and then you go to the back, you can see where that fin sticks out a little bit further than the off-road saddle, which is great for you to be able to get behind your saddle on those steep descents. The shell of the saddles are a little different, okay? So uh, you can see the road saddle actually has this kind of bracing here. It's uh, got, you know, two points that it braces to uh, that the rails are connected to, where the off-road is actually just one brace right here and right here. So that helps with absorbing some of those hard hits uh, and everything. <clears throat> As most of the uh, pro saddles, you do have the mount here for uh, GoPro cameras, lights, and, and so much more. Now, the one main difference that I found between this saddle and this saddle is actually the nose width. I, I really didn't expect this, but the off-road saddle nose is ever so slightly narrower than the road saddle. So let's measure those real quick. And, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this little section here, from here, from here to here. So the road version of this saddle here, and we're gonna measure from this point so we can kinda get a good measurement. All right. So this one comes out to be right at 47 millimeter for the road version. So 47 millimeter for the road version. The off-road version, at the same point, this easily fits there. So let me turn that around so I can do this. Pinch it down a little bit. That comes in at about 44 millimeter. Okay, so not much different. You know, it's only three millimeter difference. So some of you may not even feel that difference, um, but we'll talk about that uh, when we talk about how this saddle would do on gravel and road. Uh, Weight-wise, 
<clears throat> this saddle comes in at about 212 grams on my scale. The regular one would come in at 205 grams. This is the carbon version here, which comes in at about 176 grams. And they have a newer one that is super lightweight. I think it's around 145 grams. Now, if you're on gravel that is pretty smooth, not super chunky, and you need to get aero because it's really fast, you're trying to get behind people or whatnot, you may not like this saddle. And the reason why I say that is because, once again, it comes down to that nose. The nose of the saddle is narrower. And also, not just narrower, you have more padding. So I found when I was getting on the nose of the saddle into an aero position, kind of on the rivet, as they call it, I had a lot of pressure right here, cutting off circulation, you know. Uh, I don't know how else to put it. But yeah, so the padding, I actually did not like being in this section here. Uh, it seemed to not really uh, help out too well. Uh, it caused some hot spots, and so I didn't like that at all. But uh, if you're on gravel that's real chunky and rough, and you're sitting upright anyway, and you're sitting further back in this section, this extra padding is going to help out you tr tremendously. I mean, it's going to feel great. It really is. So, uh, so on gravel, very smooth gravel, I would go with the previous model. If you ride really chunky gravel, you want to go with this, uh, this saddle here. All right, just got out to the trails. We're going to test out the saddle on some single track with a proper mountain bike and uh, see how it feels. Nice. Okay, so let's talk about how the saddle did on the mountain bike. And that, in my opinion, is where this saddle really shines. When you're hitting that single track and you're having to get off the saddle and kind of hover over the saddle and you hit some hard hits and it obviously this, this extra padding will help out there. It also, as I said before, this rounded edge here and uh, the padding on the edges are not as harsh as the road version. So the road version, you have some sharper edge here and it just doesn't feel as good uh, when you when you hit the inside of your leg with it. Uh, so after like an hour, hour and a half of riding on single track, uh, much more comfortable on this saddle. Also, you know, obviously you're not getting in an aero position on the mountain bike, so you're not really having to uh, be sitting on the nose for long periods of time. So when you're on this nose for a short amount of time, like with a, with a climb or something like that, it's not bad. It's actually very comfortable. Uh, it's just when you're sitting on the nose for a long period of time, trying to be aero, that's when you get those hot spots. So mountain bike, awesome. Okay, so for on the road, this is really where I was most disappointed in the saddle because really I was kind of expecting it to be like a lightweight TT saddle, you know, with the extra padding and everything. But once again, with that nose being as narrow or narrower, I really didn't think four millimeter would make much of a difference, but I could definitely feel it. And also with the extra padding, once again, felt like, you know, it gave me some hot spots. So on the road, I was really disappointed with it. Now, if you're riding on the road and you're never really getting on the nose of the saddle and you're just riding up upright, uh, this saddle is very comfortable. You're not going to have any issues with that. And it is also grippy though. So with it being grippy, as we said before, sometimes that can cause some hot spots as well. Uh, so that's something to think about. If you like to shift around on your saddle a lot, then you want to go with the previous version. Uh, if you like to be planted on the saddle, you want to go with the off-road version. Okay, so as far as with cyclocross, I didn't get to uh, test it with mounting and remounting, but I can go ahead and just tell you based on experience with me doing cyclocross events, I would probably prefer this for cyclocross events compared to the regular one because you are remounting onto the saddle and sometimes you're hitting the edge a lot and you're going through some rough sections with a rigid bike. So uh, really I see this saddle as, as performing exceptionally well on cyclocross. Okay, so my final thoughts on the saddle. For mountain biking, cyclocross, yes, this is a great saddle. This is gonna replace my original Pro Stealth saddle. For gravel and road, I'm actually gonna stick with the road version of this saddle, okay? As mentioned before. So if you're looking to replace your road version, I wouldn't replace it 
for road riding or for gravel riding, unless your gravel riding is super, super rough. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button, share it, comment, all that helps the channel tremendously. I will also put a link down in the description below. If you click on that link and purchase the saddle, it will give me a little bit of a commission. And when I say little, it is little. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.